uh, work on the problem that you want to. Okay. So uh, let's look at uh, how uh, to determine an inverse function. How to determine an inverse function? Before we do that, however, let's ask ourselves this question. Do all functions, do they all have inverse function or functions? The answer is no. Not all functions have inverse functions. A function has to have a certain property and we'll discuss the property first and then we'll determine the inverse. So the answer is no. Not all functions have inverse functions. The answer is yes if I say all functions have inverses. But not all functions have inverses that are functions as well. Can I find an inverse for everything? Yes. But only specific functions have inverses that are functions themselves. Okay, so when we started chapter two, I think I refreshed your memory with three sets of bubbles. The first one was something like this. The second one was something like this. And of course, some numbers in each set. And the third one was something like this. So let's analyze the first one. Is the first one representative of a function? Yes. yes, because each x corresponds to only one y. Now imagine that we landed here, we are on the moon, let's say, and we want to go back. So if I want to go back, can I create a function going back for each x, one y, for each x, one y, for each x, one y. So going backwards, can I create a function? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. Only because this function is 1 to 1. It has this property that to each y, it corresponds only 1x. Not only to each x, it corresponds only 1y. But also to each y, it corresponds back only 1x. We call this 1 to 1. And normally we write it 1-1, 1, dash one, one uh, hyphen 1. That's why this function has an inverse. What is the, the, the word I'm looking for? Exactly. Because it is one to one, it will have an inverse that is a function. OK. Uh, let's look at the second one. Is this a function? To each x only one y, to each x only one y, to each x only one y. True? It's a, it is a function. Now we land it here. We want to go back. Can I create a function going this way? No, because this x corresponds to two different y values. Notice that I already said that this is, this is a set of x values now for the inverse one. Right? So this is a set of, of uh, x values for the function. And this is a set of x values for the inverse because I'm going this way. Is this going backwards? Is this a function? No. Therefore, this is a function, but not one to one. Therefore, it will or it will not have an inverse function. It will not have an inverse function. Uh, for the third and fourth one, we shouldn't even discuss, because the third one is not a function. How can it have a, an inverse that is a function? But we're not interested, even if it does. So now, let's look at a few graphs. And I would like you to identify, because we already know these three. We may not know all of them yet. Um, all functions that we are going to look at this in this class, because we have plenty more to look at in chapters 3 and 4. Uh, so this is one graph. This is another graph. And this is another graph. 
So let's please identify the first function. They are all functions. Can anyone identify the first one? Say it again. Of course, but what type of function is it? No, no, no. This one, the graph. Exactly. Thank you. That's all I needed first. It is one to one. Here's why. By the by the by the vertical line test is a function, but by the horizontal line test, it says for each y value, I have only one x. So for this y value, I get only one x. For this y value, I get only one x. Therefore, the linear function we can conclude is or is not one to one. It is one to one. Friendly function, nice function. Defined everywhere. Also one to one. It has an inverse function. Friendly. Okay, second one. What type of function is the second one? It's not one to one. What type is it? Quadratic. Very good. By the horizontal line test, look what happens. For any, I shouldn't say for any, for many. Uh, horizontal lines, I will be reading how many x values. So it's this situation. Yes, for two different x values, I have only one y value, not one to one. So not one to one. From a function that is not one to one, can I make a function that is one to one? Yes. Hold your breath for a second. Here it is. I diminish its domain. I decided the domain of this function is only from 0 to infinity. Did I create a quadratic function that happens to be 1 to 1 only between 0 and infinity? Yes, because by the horizontal line test, I created a function. I took a piece of a quadratic function, and I said, now this is 1 to 1. OK, very good. But in general, what we conclude about the quadratic function is or is not one-to-one. -one. Sure. It's not one-to-one. -one. OK, last function that I have in the third coordinate system is, and we know this graph very well, do. say it again. Do. Yes. It was one of the list on the uh, uh, functions on the list of seven functions for 2.5. Which one? Indeed, the square root of x. We can never forget this one. OK, is the square root 1 to 1 or not? No. Yes, right? <laughs> By the horizontal line test, let's take a look. By the horizontal line test, I can cross this graph with as many lines as I want. And I will read for each line how many different x values. One x value for each y. One y. Correct? Therefore, it is one to one. So now we can answer this question. Do all functions have inverse functions? No. Which functions? Let's continue with a note. Which functions have inverse functions then? Note. Only one to one functions have, thank you, if the function is not one to one, don't bother. It will have an inverse, but not an inverse that is a function as well. Very good. Next item on the list how to determine an inverse function. So since we know that linear functions are one to one, correct? OK, please give me a linear function, any function you can think of. We know that it's one to one because it's going to be linear. And um, we would like to determine using a four step procedure, we would like to determine the one to one, the inverse function. Okay, so I'm begging for a linear function. Okay, so let's spice it up. Let's say negative 3x plus 2. Or, uh, I don't know, plus 12. 
Okay, question, is this a linear function? Is it one-to-one? -one? Yes, because we already know the graph. It's either with a positive slope or with a negative slope. And by the horizontal line test, that's okay. By the horizontal line test, it will be one-to-one. -one. Since it is one-to-one, -one, there is a four-step procedure for finding the inverse function of f of x. The notation is, I know it's tempting to say, oh, it's a if f raised to negative 1 of x. No, this is what it is. I, I have to give you that. But how we read it is f inverse of x. So the notation for a function g of x for the inverse of g of x will be g inverse of x. So if it's a function t of x, its inverse will be t inverse of x. We'll have the same letter. Do not assume that this is 1 over f because it's not the case. This is not 1 over f. This is just a notation. So there is a four-step procedure for finding the inverse. So here's the first step. Replace f of x, uh, sorry, replace y with f of x. Can I do that? Can I replace, um, I was right the first time, replace f of x with y, that's what I meant. Sorry about that. Can I replace f of x by y? Yes, why? Who allows me to do that? Simply because they are? They are the same. Because they are the same. f of x and y are identical. So that's not a big deal. I replaced f of x with y. Very good. So this is y equals negative 3x plus 2. In step 2, swap or interchange Thank you, thank you. Uh, interchange uh, x and y. Now here's a question. Can I do that? So replacing f of x by y, it's legitimate, allowed, because they are the same. But now the question is, I'm swapping these two. When I see y, I write x. And when I see x, I write y. in a second. So let's come back. So the function is defined on the first bubble, which is the domain, and the range is the second bubble. Where will the inverse function be defined at? Right, going back. That's why all these y values from function f, they become what for function f inverse? Exactly. That's the reason why I'm allowed to swap. So, so let me give an example before we continue. Because I need this for the next step anyway. Let's say this is set A and this is set B. And let's say we have here negative 3. We apply function f and we get 4. When I apply function f inverse to 4, what do I have to get? Negative 3. So for function f, I have the ordered pair negative 3, 4. For function f inverse, I have the order. That's it. Exactly. So what represented y value for function f, uh, over the sub, all of a sudden, now it represents 4 for f inverse, indeed. So that's the reason why we are allowed to swap x and y. Now in step 3, I'm solving for, what do you think I'm after? I'm, I'm, I'm after f prime. 
which now represents what? Which of these exactly? Solve for y, indeed, which will become f inverse. That's what we are after. So I'm going to subtract 12. So x minus 12 equals negative 3y in step 3. And then y equals x minus 12 divided by negative 3, which I really don't like the notation. So I'm going to write it again with minus in front. And in step 4, I just use the notation f prime of x. What does f prime of x equal to? f prime of x equals let's go back so I subtracted 12 because I'm solving for y is that okay so far so I have x minus 12 equals negative 3y is that okay yeah I see where I messed up that's okay and then we divide both sides by negative 3 but I don't like to have a negative denominator Yes. The yellow part, or the green part, I'm sorry. So we move 12 to the other side, so x minus 12 equals negative 3y, and then we divided both sides by negative 3. I missed the switch part, so the x equals... Yes, so we interchange x and y. And we know y, right? Mm -hmm. Because x, the previous y became x for f inverse. So then what is f inverse? What does f inverse equal to? Can anyone dictate? It's what we just solved for. It's this expression. <laughs> right? This is what we solved for. Any questions, please? Yes. 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 I'm solving for y dividing both sides by negative 3. The numerator is positive, the denominator is negative, so the fraction is negative. Yes, you have to move 12 to the other side, it becomes negative. That's what happens when you move a term from one side to the other. Is that okay? And then you divide by negative 3, which is here in the denominator. Please. Could you leave the uh, negative on, uh, on the bottom of the 3 and still leave the correct answer, or do you have to put it in front of the... It's a very good question. Um, this is correct. But we don't leave negative, yes. So if it's positive over negative, it's negative. Yes. Joseph, is this okay? Okay. So this is f inverse. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. If I want to find the function composition f, comp f inverse, and the function composition the other way, f inverse type comes comp f, what do you think this will equal to? Okay. Of course, y. They are what? They are inverses of each other. They must be inverses of each other. We determined we determined f inverse that is the, the uh, that has the property of canceling the effect of f on x and the other way around. Of course, would you like to see it? Would you like to determine any of these two? If we don't get x, you understand that this is incorrect. Because the question was four-step procedure for finding the inverse function for f of x. So if what we obtained with any function composition, either this one or this one in any direction or in any order if you want, if we don't get x, this is incorrect. So which one, which one would you like to work on? Would you like to work on the first one or the second one? It doesn't matter. Which one would you like to work on? Number one or number two? Number one. That's fine. Okay, so let's work on this. We want to check 
Very good. Good point. So f comp f inverse of x is, by definition, I have to write the definition first. Please dictate the definition. f of inverse of x. Awesome. That's what it is. f comp f inverse is f of f inverse of x. Perfect. Now I need to replace this. I'm just making a point. You don't have to cross it out like that. What am I replacing it by? Right? Agreed? So this is negative x minus 12 divided by 3. So this is f of negative x minus 12 divided by 3. Now I have to go back to f and see what f is telling us to do. F says negative 3 times whatever you want plus 12. This is what we have to calculate. So negative 3 So negative 3 times whatever you want and plus 12. And I lost track of my numbers here. Right? So negative 3 times whatever plus 12. Good. So now I will have to simplify. So I have a negative 3 in, in front and a negative. So obviously it's clear that these two will change into positive. I have a 3 outside at the top, and I have a 3 outside, uh, inside in the denominator. So I will be able to simplify this with this. And the minus is gone. What is left in parentheses? And I have plus 12 outside. What should the answer be? Is it? So therefore, what we determine that x, as x minus 12 with the minus in front over 3 is indeed the inverse function of negative 3x plus 12. Is it clear? OK. The next step here is graph them on the same coordinate system. Graph f of x and f inverse on the same coordinate system. Okay, so f of x equals negative 3x plus 12, and f inverse negative x minus 12 divided by 3. I forgot to ask. We, you picked number 1, but what do you think number 2 will be like f inverse comp f of x? So we determined this, and it was x. What do you think this would be for sure? Of course. Absolutely. Both of them have to equal x. So if you would like, later on today, when you get the chance, check. Okay? You should get x. Why? Because these two functions are inverses of each other. What does that mean? One is canceling the effect, the effect of the other. Okay? It's like imagining, again, my silly example. I give you $10, so it's addition by 10. And I take it back, subtraction by 10. Good. So let's start by graphing f of x. Remember the, um, the easiest and the most important points are what? When we graph a line. Oh, Wonderful. Awesome. You make me so proud. Thank you indeed. So then when x is 0, I covered it. How much is y? Very good. And the ordered pair is? x is always first, that's okay, and then 12. Good. So now y is 0, I cover it. But remember, you either move negative 3x to the other side, or you say that you move 12 to the other side. When you move negative 3x, it becomes positive. So 3x equals 12, 3x equals 12, so x equals 4. What is the other, other ordered pair that we will have to plot? Yes, as the x-intercept, y-intercept, x-intercept. Ready?
0, 12. I'm going to say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Uh, 2, 4. Two ordered pairs, the x and y intercepts, connect, extend, I'm going to write somewhere next to this line, I'm going to write the equation, or the expression, or the function. So f of x equals negative 3x plus 12. Okay, now I should repeat the process for f inverse. I refuse to. I would like you, without any calculations, to give me two ordered pairs that I will have to plot, connect and extend, and get the graph of f inverse. 12, 0, 0, Is that clear? Is that clear? How do I know? The reverse order, right? So if the function had the ordered pair negative 3, 4, what will the inverse have to have? If the function has negative 3, 4, what would the inverse have to have? That's it. So I have the points. I already calculated them for f. So one more time, can anyone give me? Awesome. As I said, I'm very proud of you. So can anyone give me? 12, 0. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. That's 12, 0. And the other one? Correct. Before, before I graph, I want to show you something that is extremely important. And we are going to write the note. Here's what I'm doing before we do anything. Careful. We have discussed this graph before. Can anyone remind us what is this graph? Oh, no one can see. I'm sorry. Let me use a different color. It's on the list of seven functions for 2.5. It's the very first one. What function is it? X. Y equals x. Very good. So notice what happens here. This point is symmetric with respect to of, the, of this point with respect to this line. This point is symmetric of this point with respect to this line. So when I am going to graph the inverse function, I better have a piece like this and a piece like this because they have to completely overlap. So, here's the graph of f inverse, where the function f crosses this line, like here, it's like 1, 1. Reverse 1, 1 for me. 1, 1. If it's 10, 10, reverse 10, 10 for me. Right? So, it has to cross at the same point. So if the function crosses y equals x in this point, the inverse function have, has to go through the same point. Because all, all points on y equals x are 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. And when you reverse them, you get the same point. So here it is. This is f inverse, negative x minus 12 divided by 3. And here's our notes the graphs of f and f inverse forever. The graphs of f, any function that is one-to-one, -one, and its inverse, f inverse, must be or are what? Symmetric WRT with respect to the line, what line? Y equals X. Uh, 
as you see, I folded the graphs. So this piece is here and this piece is here. Of course, my graph is not perfect. I, I apologize. Okay, but this is a reflection of this line. And this is a reflection of this line with respect to the mirror. This is the mirror, y equals x. And this happens for any function and its inverse. OK, I would like to look at a couple of applications before we move on. Yes, any questions, please? Any questions? Yes. Yes? Um, so the function has 0, 12, and 4, 0, correct. Yes? No? Yes, for the inverse, you mean? Yes. 0, 4 is right here, and 12, 0 is here. So this point is a mirror image of this point, and this point is a mirror Im image of this point. They have to be symmetric across y equals x. 12, 0, 0, 12. 4, 0, 4, 0, 0. I'm sorry? Yes, this is the inverse function. Yes, 12, 0, and 0, 4. Better? Good. Okay, so um, we are given on page 322 two little charts. And I'm going to copy negative 1, 1, 0, 4, 1, 5, and 2, negative 1. And on the other one, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 10, negative 1. Uh, we're asked to find in 57, using the tables, we're asked to find f inverse of g of 10. OK. So where do I start? Where is the starting point? I'm sorry? There is only one question here. This is the information given. And the question is, find f inverse of g of 10. Where is my starting point? Obviously, g of 10. I have to start with the inside. The inside is the first point, right? the first step. How do I find g of 10? Yes, how much is it? g of 10 is negative 1. Awesome. So now I'm asked to find f inverse of? Good. So remember, f is applied to a number and gives us negative 1. We apply f inverse to negative 1 to get what? How much? We're talking about f, not g. g is gone, right? So we want f inverse of negative 1. So we know that f is applied to a number and the result is negative 1. We apply f inverse to negative 1 to get to get 2 indeed. Very good. So f inverse is applied to negative 1 and the result must be 2. Does it make sense? Okay, very good. Good job. Um, the next uh, type of exercise. Yes, any questions? You want me to go back? Is it clear? Much, um, We're talking about this? Yeah, that one. So you, you pretty much substituted the g of 10 with negative 1. Yes, because when x is 10, g of 10 is negative 1. But then I'm not asked to find f, f of negative 1. I'm asked to find f inverse of negative 1. Oh, okay. And from this table, I know this. Negative 1 goes to 1, 0 goes to 4, 
one goes to five and two goes to negative one. So when I apply F inverse to any of these, the answer must be exactly where they came from, otherwise it's not the inverse function. So when I apply F inverse to one, I get this, to four, I get this, to five, I get this, but when I apply to negative one, which is what I need, I get the answer too. Better? Yeah. Everyone? Okay, perfect. So uh, in the next uh, set of problems, we are given f of x, which is uh, 2x minus 5. We are given g of x, which is 4x minus 1. And we are given h of x, which is x squared plus x plus 2. They are giving us three different functions, f, g, and h. I'm copying them all, but we may not need all of them, depending on which problem we use. We want to solve. Um, what caught my eye is uh, 61. In 61, we are asked to find f inverse of 1. And then I would like to um, look at two more problems. Unless you say, I still need to see another one to um, inverse function, how to find the inverse function for another one. OK, ready? So this is slightly more difficult because uh, I'm not given these ordered pairs, right? So here, if, you, if I were asked to find f inverse of 1, I would have said it's negative 1. But in this case, I'm given the function. So I think, again, in terms of bubbles. So, so this is function f, and backwards is f inverse. So I'm asked to find what value I apply f to to get 1. Because when I apply f inverse to 1, I will get that number. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what I have in here, but I know for sure that when I apply function f, this is the function f. When I apply it to this number, I get 1. So that when I apply f inverse to 1, I get that number back. So what do I do? So f of 1 will not give me 1. So 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So this is not the route. So I want f of whatever to be 1. The y. The y to be 1, exactly. So what is this? Well, this is 2x minus 5, who needs to be 1. And there is only one value. That will make 2x minus 5 to be 1. So some, some x value multiplied by 2, subtract 5, will give us 1 for sure. Now, I need to, add, to determine that number. 3. Yes. Because this is 2x equals 6, I divide by 2 and I get x equals 3. And this is the correct number. So let's check again. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. It's the only one. How do I know it's the only one? Because the function is 1 to 1. There is no other. So then what would you say f inverse of 1 is? One. Yes, you're right. So f inverse of 1 is 3. In other words, the ordered pair is indeed 1, 3 for the inverse function. Very good. Any questions on this? Does it make sense? OK. I like to look at the Look at two ordered pairs and then continue with something else. Uh, two ordered pairs. Two, two uh, word problems. The graph represents the probability of two people in the same room sharing a birthday. We're not talking about the year. We're talking about um, uh, month and day. I'll see you on Wednesday. Good luck. Um, as a function number of people in the room. So, for, by the way, is this a function? Is it one to one? By the horizontal line test is 1 to 1. By the vertical line test is a function. Uh, explain why f has an inverse. It uh, has an inverse because it is 1 to 1. Very good. Perfect. Describe in practical terms the meaning of f inverse of 0.25. So first of all, let's, uh, let's explain what this means. So if we have 30 people in the room, what is the probability that two of them share the same day and month for the birthday? If we have 30, 
roughly what is the probability? 0.7 something, correct? Uh, what if we have 50? What is the probability that two people out of those 50 will share the same month and day? Birthday. So roughly, quite close to certain, right? 95%. Now the question is, find F inverse of 0.25. I'm asked that if I set the probability to what? To 25%, how many people I should have in the room? 15. What if uh, I need to determine F inverse of 50? I want the probability to be 50%. So when the probability is 50, how many people roughly I should have in the room? In order to guarantee if the model is still true, right? To guarantee, so 20 something, right? So finally, can anyone explain F inverse of 0.7? When the probability of having two people in the same room is set, is set to 70%, we really should have in the room 30 people. So this is an application of F inverse. We want to make sure, so the graph, the function was determined, we graphed it, so now we want to, deter, to figure it out, okay, if we set the probability at 50, how many people we should have in the room? If we set the probability to 70, how many people we should have in the room? So this is the inverse function. Okay, uh, 68. A study of 900 working women in Texas showed that their feelings changed throughout the day. I think it's valid for everyone, right? Uh, as the graph indicates, the women felt better at, as time passed, okay? Except for a blip, well, at lunchtime. So lunchtime is right here. So other than that, you know, they felt better apparently, according to the graph, they felt be better as time passed. They were thinking of going home, maybe. Okay, first question. Does the graph have an inverse that is a function? Mm -hmm. If it's one-to-one. -one, mm -hmm. Is it one-to-one? -one? Mm -hmm. yes. One-to-one means any horizontal line crosses the graph in exactly one point. For this y value, 1x. For this y value, 1x. For this y value, 1x. Can I say that here? So let me use a pencil. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. So I read this x, this x, and this x. So is this a function that is one to one? Yeah. No. Does this function then have an inverse or not? Yeah. No. Part B, identify two or more times of the day when the average happiness level is three. So I want to identify happiness level of three. So what do I do? I draw a line, or at least imagine that I draw a line at three, and I see that the happiness level was at noon, and also at 7 p.m. Uh, do the ordered pair, pairs in part B indicate that the graph represents a one-to-one -one function? No. Very good. So this was an example of an inverse function or not, and a one-to-one -one function or not, and how we read from the graph. Last section of this chapter is 2.8. It deals with two things that are complete review, but I will go through them completely. And uh, it deals with... Um,